Today, more than ever before, people rely on mass-produced and manufactured foods. But food manufacturing and processing is not risk-free. Adulterated or contaminated food can cause food poisoning, which in its most severe form can be fatal. Food poisoning costs Australia an estimated $2.6 billion a year, and foodborne illnesses may affect as many as 23,000 people a day. Adulterated or contaminated food is not always the fault of the manufacturer, but when the manufacturer is to blame, poor resource and process control is almost always the problem. Adulterated food products present obvious health risks to the consumer, but they can also cost you and your company dearly. Product adulteration results not only in damaged brands and bad publicity, but may also lead to legal sanctions, financial penalties, and job losses. In this program we will look at different types of food contamination, how they occur and how to best prevent contamination by using GMPs or good manufacturing practices. GMPs are policies and procedures set down by law to ensure that food products are manufactured, stored and delivered under conditions which ensure they will be safe to eat. There are three types of contamination that can occur in a food processing environment chemical, biological and physical. Chemical contamination can occur when additives or preservatives are inappropriately added to food but more frequently happens through the incorrect use of cleaning chemicals and pesticides around the plant. Chemicals, detergents and sanitizers should be securely stored in a dark, cool and well ventilated place. Use chemicals in accordance with the instructions on the label. If you see chemicals being used incorrectly, immediately fix the problem if you can, then report it to your supervisor. If you can't fix it, tell your supervisor straight away. Biological contaminants include bacteria and mould. Bad bacteria can be avoided by maintaining foods in safe temperature zones. Frozen food or ingredients should be kept at minus 18 degrees Celsius or below, cold food at 5 degrees Celsius or below, and hot food at 65 degrees Celsius and above. These temperature zones must be strictly observed. You must measure, maintain and monitor the temperature of stored food and dispose of any food that falls outside these safe temperature zones. Mould is another indicator of biological contamination but can also develop as a result of poor housekeeping practices. Physical contamination occurs when food is contaminated by foreign objects. These include metal, hair, rodent droppings, rust and wood splinters. Always be on the lookout for faulty, damaged or decaying equipment which may contaminate the food with flaking paint, rust or grease. Check regularly for any foreign material in open product zones. You should unpack raw product in a separate part of the plant in order to eliminate the possibility of physical contamination when opening boxes, crates, drums and other containers. One of the highest risk contaminants is glass and consequently the condition of all glass fittings in the factory should be monitored closely. As an added precaution, some food processing machinery may have metal detectors or magnets fitted to help detect and eliminate physical contaminants. Good food hygiene is your responsibility. It is up to you to observe good hygiene practices and alert a supervisor if you notice anything that threatens to adulterate food. At all times in food contact zones, you must be in correct uniform, which should include hairnets and, where appropriate, disposable gloves. Caps or hats are not acceptable substitutes for hairnets and facial hair should also be covered. Your uniform must be clean and may only be worn inside the plant. Change your clothes if you are going outside for any reason so that you don't bring contaminants back inside. Avoid wearing jewellery such as watches, necklaces and earrings. Plain wedding bands can also present an occupational health and safety risk around certain food processing machinery and should be removed. Don't wear bobby pins, false eyelashes and false fingernails or anything else that may come loose. Don't carry pens, pencils, tools or anything else in pockets above the waist 
and strictly observe non-smoking, eating and drinking rules around the plant. As a food industry employee, your personal hygiene is crucial. When you maintain a high standard of personal cleanliness and grooming, you make a strong contribution to reducing the risks of food becoming contaminated. Wash your hands with antibacterial soap and warm water before handling food and after every work break. You must also wash your hands after any of the following. Visiting the toilet or toilet area, smoking, using a handkerchief or tissue, handling garbage, and after touching your ears, nose, hair, or mouth. Dry your hands, preferably using a disposable paper towel to remove bacteria. It is important to shower every day and wash your hair. If you shave, do it regularly. Make sure your fingernails are trimmed and clean. Staff restrooms should be clean, well equipped and in proper working order. Hand washing stations should have hot and cold water, soap and disposable hand towels. If any of these items are not available, report the problem to your supervisor immediately. If you have any open cuts, wounds or sores, you must report them to a supervisor before starting work. If you are vomiting or have diarrhoea, or are sick with an infectious illness such as gastroenteritis or flu, or you have been in contact with someone who has an infectious illness, you must tell your supervisor before starting work. Pests of any type, such as birds, spiders, rodents and insects, don't belong in food processing areas. Open doors and windows are open invitations to pests. Those that are open for ventilation purposes should be screened to prevent pests entering, as should all air vents throughout the plant. Any windows close to open product zones should remain shut at all times to prevent the entry of airborne dust particles. Internal pest control can be maintained using rodent traps, insect electrocutors and external bait stations. These should be placed strategically and checked frequently. Rodents, especially mice, like to keep one side of their body against a hard surface, so traps are best placed along walls in the plant. No external bait stations can be placed inside food processing areas due to the risk of chemical contamination. Traps and special secure bait stations should be used in these areas. Raw food products stored in warehouses are particularly prone to pest infestation and should be monitored closely. Registered pest control contractors have the experience to recognise and deal with pest problems. Whether your pest control is organised internally or with the help of a registered pest control company, always keep accurate, up-to-date records of any pest activity detected as well as details of any preventative or corrective action undertaken. Good housekeeping is an effective tool in fighting contamination. If you spill something, clean it up immediately. Don't wait for someone else to do it. Store equipment not currently in use in a dry, sanitary place. Never nest wet containers together. Leave them to dry upside down in a sanitary position. Food containers should never be left open when not in use. Avoid cross-contamination, which can occur when bacteria from raw, uncooked food is transferred to processed or ready-to-eat food. This usually occurs either during the food preparation process, through the use of unclean scoops, buckets and other food processing equipment, or during storage when both types of food are stored together. Special attention needs to be paid to foods containing allergens, such as nuts, eggs and dairy products. An allergen is a substance that can cause an allergic reaction in some people. These allergic reactions can be severe or even fatal. Any equipment that comes into contact with foods containing allergens has to be carefully cleaned after each run to ensure that no traces of these foods can contaminate future batches. Maintaining a clean, tidy working area minimises the risks of allergen contamination or any other type of contamination. Company management is responsible for implementing and maintaining good manufacturing practices. Managers should assess and act upon anything that may pose a risk to the safety of the company's product. 
It is also in the best interests of the company to have a written GMP policy. A written policy will help ensure that contractors and visitors to the plant comply with GMPs. Regular training sessions for staff also help ensure that they maintain the skills required to do their job safely and hygienically. Management should also set up an internal audit procedure to ensure GMPs are being followed. Your business must have in place a satisfactory system to handle the worst case scenario, the recall of unsafe food. Such a system is crucial in minimising risks to public health and consumers. A professional recall procedure will also protect the interests of the company and its employees. Unsafe manufacturing practices can have serious results. Food hygiene can be a matter of life and death. Customers were few at Largo Small Goods today. Business has slumped since the company was named as the likely source of the salmonella outbreak which killed two people. 86-year-old Laura Pierce died at the Austin on March the 7th. Her son claims health authorities did not tell him why she died. He found out about the salmonella poisoning through the media. While lawyers acting for those such as 32-year-old Peter Glavis say the injured can expect substantial compensation. People who have been admitted to hospital for long periods of time, as in the case of one of our clients, could expect the damages to be in the tens of thousands of dollars. The poisoning scare now affects every brand of peanut butter except those made by Sanitarium. In addition to the nine brands recalled on Sunday, all Eater and Kraft peanut butter products have been ordered off the shelves. General Foods says the contaminated nuts came from its Queensland supplier, the Peanut Company of Australia, based at Kingaroy. It hasn't confirmed what contaminated the nuts or which country they came from, but it's considering legal action against the supplier and will also consider compensation to people affected by salmonella. Good hygiene begins and ends with you. It is your responsibility to report anything that could adulterate food and, as a result, pose a threat to consumer safety. Remember that it's okay to make mistakes as long as you report them immediately. And don't forget the golden rule. If in doubt, ask. Good food hygiene protects the consumer and it protects you too.